done. How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video I'm going to show you step by step how to clean and remove keys from your MacBook Air. This is the M1 MacBook Air, but it's not just going to work with your MacBook Air. It's going to work with your M1 MacBook Pro, your 2019 MacBook Pros, lots of different computers that use the same keyboard and keyboard mechanisms. We're going to go through every single detail of every single style of key. We're not going to be removing the Touch ID. That is not part of this tutorial and it's not removable from the top. A basic overview of what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate what part of the keyboard we need to work on. We're going to remove those keys using a playing card and a toothpick. Well, maybe toothpicks because you are going to break a lot of toothpicks during this process. Once the keys are removed, you're going to clean the key caps in water and then you're going to clean the keyboard with a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. Then you're going to reinstall the key caps and the crunch should be gone. You should no longer have sticky keys. They should be very clean and your M1 Mac should feel like new. There's about five different keys on this keyboard that we're gonna remove a little bit differently. So it is very important that you watch this video all the way through so you don't make a mistake, break a little nub or a tab or a switch. And before we get into the nitty gritty, I'm gonna give you guys five tips on doing this keyboard repair. Tip one is only to remove the keycaps. Do not remove the underlying scissor switch. You can break more things doing that. Mangle up aluminum clips. You can break your little plastic clips. It's just a better idea to try to remove the keycaps rather than the underlying switches. Tip number two is to get down to eye level. You can't see this in this tutorial, but I am getting my eyes down to see the keycaps, to see where the plastic meets it, and to try to get my toothpick in between the two of them in order to pry off the keycap correctly. Tip number three is to take your time. Be patient with this. There are very fragile parts and you don't want to rush it. You could break something if you don't take your time. Tip number four is to watch this video all the way through. You can do it on 1.5x if it's too long, but seeing how everything is done before accidentally breaking it is going to be helpful. And tip number five is if you don't feel comfortable doing this repair yourself, ask a friend or a family member that's a little bit more DIY, tech savvy, repairy, and they should be more than happy to try to lend a hand. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and good luck with your repair. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is isolate what part of the key keyboard is damaged. Is it crunching just on one key? Is one key not working? Is it a row? Is it a couple of different keys? Usually it's wherever you spilt a sticky sugary drink such as coffee, a smoothie, maybe some orange juice, and those are the keys that are crunching and not pressing correctly. Once you isolate where those keys are, you could try just cleaning them with a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. See if that works but actually removing the keys and getting the gunk underneath and out of the switches is probably gonna be your best bet. We're gonna be working on this section here and also the space bar, and I will show you guys the up and down, left and right arrow keys, cause those are a beast of their own. We're gonna first remove this top row style key, which is a rectangle. And the way that you're going to do that is grab your playing card and you're going to slide it underneath your key, which is going to lift your key up a little bit and also give you access to underneath the key with your toothpick. If you go corner of playing card to corner of key, Usually that will be the easiest way to get it underneath. And then you're going to grab your toothpick. You're gonna to pry it underneath the key. You're gonna to wanna to put pressure on the right side of these keys and you're going to want to pull up on the left side. There's two clips on the left side that are like a lobster claw that we're releasing. Once those two clips are released, all you have to do is push your key a little bit to the right and it'll release other two awning clips and you can lift it off. So the two little lobster clips right here will clip onto these little nubs on the key switch and these two awning clips over here will slide over and under the nubs over here holding the key down. I don't recommend that you take off any of these scissor switches because they're much more difficult to put back together and put back on the keyboard. Now, in order to take off one of these square keys, we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna pry corner to corner with our card, get our toothpick underneath. I'm gonna put pressure on the top with my finger, pry underneath, and there's two lobster clips on the bottom of the key 
And then if you pull the key down, it'll release the awning clips and you should be able to pull the key cap off. The two lobster clips are on the bottom of the key. They clip onto the middle part of that key switch. The awning clips are up here, which slide up and over these two nubs at the top. The tab key is a little bit different. We're still gonna do corner of the card to the corner of the key. We're gonna put pressure on the top, get our toothpick underneath it, and we're going to pry up the two clips that are middle bottom of the key. Then we're going to pull the key down and take it off. As you can see, this key has a support bar on the bottom. The support bar rests into some aluminum hooks that are attached to the MacBook Pro. You don't want to damage or move those because everything has to be so perfect in order for it to work. If for some reason the support bar comes off, all you have to do is orient the key with the lobster clips on the bottom, grab that support bar and press it in like that. There are little clips that hold it in now we're going to work on the caps lock key, which is just a bigger version of the tab key. We're going to go corner to corner, get our toothpick underneath it, and we're going to do the same thing. Pry up those two lobster clips, pull the key down, and then pull the key up. One support bar on the bottom. It's a bigger key switch, but it's designed the same way with the lobster clips at the bottom, the awning clips at the top. Now we're going to go over the shift key, which, which is a more pain in the butt than the rest of the keys that we've done so far. Same thing, corner to corner. There's a support bar at the bottom of this shift key. There's also a support bar at the top of the shift key. And we're going to pry in between the bottom support bar and the key cap in order to get the support bar separated. It's easiest to see that from the corner. You can get your toothpick in between and then you're just going to run it along the key and you'll hear it click a couple times and you'll see the support bar drop. For this key, there's actually two key switches that have lobster clips at the bottom, awning clips at the top that you'll want to pry up. Sometimes they release when you're removing that support bar and you can see if they did by just lifting that key cap. I'm getting a lot of movement so I can just pull towards me and then I can lift the keycap out. You will see that it has a top support bar. It goes into a little channel that has hooks that hold it into place, and we're just gonna leave that one attached, and then we're gonna take the bottom support bar out. The tab keys, just like the delete key, the return keys are the same, the shift keys are the same, the command key is the same as a square key, it's just a little bit bigger. All of these square keys are designed the same way, all of these FN control and option command keys are designed the same way, and all of these rectangle keys are designed the same way. Now we're gonna be working on the space bar, which is one of the more tricky keys on the keyboard. There are two support bars, one on the bottom, one on the top, and there's also two key switches underneath that the key is attached to. You're going to want to attack this from the corner and we're going to remove the bottom support bar before we try to remove the space bar key. So we're going to go from the bottom corner with... You're going to go the bottom corner with our playing card. Pry it up a little bit. Once you can see, you should be able to get the toothpick on the corner between the keycap and the support bar. Once you get that, you can run it along. It's unclipping, removing that bottom support bar. And then you're gonna look for where the key attaches to the key switch, which is one here and then one over here. And you're going to disconnect the keycap from the key switch. I just did it right there. I'm gonna move this direction and get it off of there. Then you're gonna pull the key cap towards you and you should be able to lift it up. The top support bar is still on the key. The bottom support bar was detached. We, we can just lift it out. You do wanna be careful. There's a little aluminum channel here where those support bars rest in. You don't wanna bend or break those off. Otherwise, the key is not going to reinstall. This is what those key switch looks like. The clips clip down here on both sides. That's about the most complicated key on this keyboard. Once you get the keys that are gunked up and dirty removed from the keyboard, you're going to put them in a little plate or bowl of water. This is going to clean off all of the junk gunk, the coffee, the sugary soda, whatever was attached, whatever you spilt on your keyboard that's causing it to be sticky or crunchy keys. You want to do it in water because water is going to dissolve all of that sugar and nasty stuff. You can expedite it by brushing it with a toothbrush to clean off 
all of those keys. Once you let them soak for a while and they're cleaned, you're gonna wanna take a small little hand towel, get those keys out of there and dry those bad boys off. That's gonna take care of the key caps themselves and the little support wires if those get gunked up. And then to clean the actual keyboard, once the key caps are removed, you can blow, blow on your keyboard, use some compressed air to get up and in there if you have compressed air. If your key switches are junked up and there's just sugary drink all inside of here, you're gonna wanna take a toothbrush and you're gonna take some isopropyl alcohol. You're going to put it on the toothbrush and you're going to work it into the keyboard, into those key switches, move it around, work it on every single key. A high percentage isopropyl alcohol should not harm your keyboard and it should help to clean out any of that junk and gunk. Once the alcohol dries off of your keyboard and once the keys are back dry, we're going to reinstall them and you wanna make sure you reinstall them correctly because you could damage a keycap or a underlying key switch and that would be a pain in the butt. And you'd have to order a part off of eBay or Amazon, wait a couple more days to get your keyboard fixed. First, we're gonna reinstall the spacebar key. We're gonna to get the wire support edges of it slide into these little aluminum holders of the keyboard you're going to slide that in the middle and then you're going to pull it towards you and rest it down and then we're going to take the key cap and you're going to have the top support already on it and if for some reason you detach the top support when you were taking it off or however it came apart you would just grab that top support you're going to look at your key the top of the key is here with the notches that look like this versus the notches that look like this. This is the top of the key, this is the bottom of the key. We're just going to rest that top support into the top of the key right along the edge. It'll click into place if you press it down. There's a couple little clips that'll hold it and then your key is ready to be installed. Rotate the little feet out. You're going to slide those feet into that little notch then you're going to pull the key down towards you a little bit. We're going to need to attach all of the awning clips from the top of the key into the key switches. And the way that you do that is by pulling the key towards you a little bit, pressing down a little bit into these little middle sections, and then pushing the key away from you. That will lodge the four awning clips in. Then you should be able to just press down on the bottom of the key, clipping it into the bottom lobster clips, and also into the bottom support bar. Now your key should be reinstalled and pressing perfectly fine. Now we're going to reinstall our shift key, which is pretty much a smaller version of the space bar key. We're gonna grab our support bar, drop it and fold it down towards us. We have the shift key with the top support bar already on it. If it got separated, it goes on to the top of the key. You can see what's the top of the key by looking at the graphic. So we know this is the top of the key and it's right on the border and the edge. You just press it down into place. Then we're gonna put the little notches of the support bar into the middle and we're going to pull the key down towards us a little bit. And then we're going to press down on the top of the key and slide it in. That's going to attach those awning clips. Then we're going to press down on the bottom and it's going to reattach the lobster clips as well as the bottom support bar. Now with the caps lock, we just have one support bar. It goes onto the bottom of the key. We're going to slide that in. It goes underneath little aluminum hooks in the center of the slot. And then we're going to pull the key towards us, push down on the top of the key, push away from us. That's going to lock those awning clips into place. And then we're gonna press down on the bottom of the key locking those lobster clips, reinstalling your caps lock key. Your tab key is designed the same way. Attach your bottom support, slide it underneath the two little aluminum hooks, drop it down, pull it towards you a little bit, and then with pressure on the top of the key, push it away from you a little bit, getting it underneath those awning clips, and then press down on the bottom of the key, clicking it into place. With your normal square keys, you're going to slide them in top first, and then you're gonna press down the bottom. Put some pressure on the top, slide the key in, and then we're going to press down the bottom. Sliding the key in that way gets those awning clips on correctly and then attaches the bottom lobster clips. With your half keys on your top row, the awning clips are on this side, so you're gonna wanna drop the key in, pull the key a little bit to the left, creating a gap, and then putting pressure on the right-hand side 
and then sliding to the right, locking these two awning clips in. I haven't pressed anything on the left side yet until these awning clips are in. And then I'm gonna press down on that side, clipping these two lobster clips in. The awning clips were already in and our half key is reinstalled. Now we're gonna take a look at the up, down, left and right keys. These ones are very similar to the half keys that we already went over, but they're oriented a little bit different. And if you don't do it right, you could end up breaking the key cap or the switch underneath. So for these bottom three keys, the side that you're going to unclip is going to be on the right side of the key. So it's here, here, and here. This side is the slide side and then the top top key, the clip is on the left and then the right of the key is the slide side. So we're going to pry this key up with our card. We're gonna put pressure with our finger on this left side and we're going to pry up on the right side. You should be able to snap it off. Now you're gonna take your card and you're gonna pry it underneath the entire scissor mechanism from this corner here. You're gonna wanna lift it up. You can't really see it on the camera from that angle. I'm lifting underneath the scissor mechanism and that allows me to just push the key over and slide off the two little hooks that are on this scissor mechanism right here. This is what it looks like what I was doing without the key cap on. I was prying the corner up it lifts the key, allowing you to push off the slide portion of the key. These two keys are built exactly the same as that key. The up key is different. We're gonna pry under the left corner. We're gonna put pressure on the right side. We're gonna pop off the key from the scissor switch there. Then we're going to get under the scissor switch, pry that key up, and then you should be able to push it off like that going that direction. Now to reinstall these keys, you're gonna do just what you did to take it off. You're going to pry it up using the corner of the card, or you could use the toothpick to pry up that switch. Then you're going to slide the key that direction, this side of the key underneath the scissor mechanism. Then you're gonna remove your toothpick or your card the key will be cockeyed, but you're going to press down on the other side and it's going to clip these two sides into place. The scissor switch must be lifted and this side must be slid on in order to work correct. Now we're going to do the other key that we took off, sliding our card underneath, sliding our key cap on, getting this side attached to the little clips, removing our card and then pressing down on the key cap and the up, down, left, right, and then these are reattached. That is the detailed step-by-step -step tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful. It helps other people find this tutorial. It helps other people fix their M1 keyboards. If you have any questions, throw them in the comment section. I will try to link to some spare parts if you accidentally broke your keyboard in the process. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.